I'm thirsty. Look at this. Uh, this water, this water is bottled water. It looks pure. It looks clean. Watch out. The days of just accepting something as pure because it looks pure are gone. In this generation, you need to go deeper to confirm, is it really pure? Grace and peace to you in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Yes, in today's edition of Take Care of Your Hearts, I want to share with you a sermon that is both challenging and thought-provoking, titled Finding Truth in a Fake Generation. And I encourage you to watch this message with an open heart, with your undivided attention, and remember to examine whatever you hear in the lights of God's Word. Let's watch together in Jesus' name. We live in a fake generation where it is difficult, very, very difficult to be real. I mean, it is so difficult to live for God. That's what the Bible says in Matthew 22, verse 14. The Bible says, many are called, few are chosen. In this generation that we're in today, don't just quickly arrive at a conclusion without examining what you hear in the lights of God's word. Those days, the days of just taking what you, what you hear and, and what you see and what you read, taking those things at face value, those days are gone. Tell your neighbor, those days are gone. Tell your other neighbor, those days are gone. Let, let me try and explain what I mean. Give some, some practical examples. Look at that beautiful lady. I love her. People of God, those days are gone. In this generation, you have to look deeper. You have to go beyond the makeup. Why? Is she beautiful on the surface or beautiful in the heart? Tell your neighbor, those days are gone. Those days are gone. Okay, oh, c come and look at this. Come and look, come and look at this news online. Breaking news. Quickly share it on your WhatsApp group. Wow. <sighs> Be careful. In today's generation, don't just quickly take what you read without confirmation because fake news is everywhere. Tell your neighbor, those days are gone. Those days are gone. Or you receive a phone call. Ah, uh, look, I promise you, I'm ready to help you. I'm ready to do it. Just give me one week, I'll settle everything. Brothers and sisters, don't be too quick to jubilate. The days of taking people at their word and holding on to their promises are gone. Love everyone, trust only God. Whew, I'm thirsty. Look at this, uh, this water, this water is bottled water. It looks pure, it looks clean. Watch out. The days of just accepting something as pure because it looks pure are gone. In this generation, you need to go deeper to confirm, is it really pure? 
lest you take something that is contaminated. Tell your neighbor, those days are gone. Oh, okay, another good example. You tuned onto your television and you, you see a, a pastor preaching, preaching a message. You see the, the charisma of the pastor. The pastor is saying, and the Bible says in Psalm 23 verse 4, that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. The days of merely listening to a pastor, a prophet, a priest, a bishop, an apostle, those days are gone. The message may be true on the surface, but you still need to confirm the messenger. Because anyone can say, Jesus is Lord. You need to confirm who is the person that is talking to you. In the same vein, the days are gone when you can allow anyone to pray for you, to lay their hands on you. <laughs> Those days are gone. I'm not excluding myself. As you are listening to my message today, please go and confirm it in the light of God's word. Don't just take what I say. Those days are gone. What about politicians? Put on your, your television, you hear political rally. Someone campaigning for presidents, governor, uh, mayor, uh, this, that. They say, I will defeat terror within five months. I will provide jobs for all the unemployed youths within six months. I will put food on everyone's table and money in everyone's pockets if you vote for me now. <laughs> People of God, be wise. The days of listening to a political campaign and immediately accepting what they say are oh. You need to examine what you hear in the light of God's word. You see someone crying today. <laughs> Look, I'm not saying you should not comfort them. Go and comfort them, but be careful of their tears. Some tears fall from the eyes, but not from the heart. That's why I said we are living in a fake generation where it is difficult, very difficult to be real. That's why you have to examine everything in the lights of God's word. What, what do I mean by examine? Examination means don't just take things at face value. Don't just accept things at face value. Brothers and sisters, I would like you to reflect on your life. Just in this moment, viewers around the world, reflect on your own life. Many of the situations we find ourselves in today are as a result of not examining our deeds, our relationships with people, our encounters with people, the promises people made to us, the phone calls we exchanged with people, the emails we exchanged with people. Not examining them in the light of God's word has put many of us in the situation we are in today. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. Say, neighbor. neighbor. Appearance can be deceptive. This is why the Bible says in Matthew 26, verse 41, watch and pray. <laughs> 
Watch and pray because of the generation we are living in today. Just, just go to a market. Pick any popular markets in your state, your area, your country, your residency. Go to that market. To find a genuine product is difficult, but fake is everywhere. To get something genuine, to get something authentic, you have to go deeper because we are living in a fake generation. This is why the scripture tells us in John 8 verse 32, find out the truth and the truth will set you free. And this brings us to the title of today's message, finding truth in a fake generation. Turn with me to the book of Acts, chapter 19, which will be our proof text for today's message. Acts chapter 19. And I'm gonna read from verses 13 to 16. This is the case of the seven sons of Sceva. I'm sure you know about it. Verse 13, it reads thus. Some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon-possessed. They would say, in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. Now, seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. Now, take note of verse 15. One day, tell your neighbor one day. One day the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are Verse 16, last verse. Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them, overpowered them all, and gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. Now, I want you to focus on those words in verse 15. The subject we're looking at here is those two words, one day. Don't forget that the seven sons of Sceva were fake. They were unauthorized to do the job they were doing. And one day, they faced a question they could not answer. People of God, you can be rich and famous and yet be fake one day. You can be popular, influential, and yet be fake one day. You, you can even claim to have reached the, the peak, the, the pinnacle of your career, and yet be fake one day. Day. One day, you will be asked the question, what are you doing? Where did this come from? In other words, one day, you will face a test of legitimacy. What does this mean? This means a season is coming where you will not be able to go further. Because the only one who can take us to the end is Jesus Christ. Nothing can take us to the end without Jesus, because he is the beginning and the end. I, I, hope, I hope you understand what I'm saying, people of God. I hope you are with me. You know, if you have a race, all right, there's a race. 
let's say I'm gonna run from here to, to the pulpits, all right? If, I, if I'm gonna start this race, the beginning of the race does not determine the winner. Okay, let's go halfway. The midway points of the race does not determine the winner. What determines the winner? The end. Only Jesus can take you to the end. Because he is the beginning and the end. The beginning, the starts, the, the, the mid points are off record. The end will set the record straight. Are you a graduate? And you know how you got there. You're using someone else's certificates. Or you, you cheated in your exams. One day. Have you traveled abroad to another country using a, a fake visa? using someone else's name or passports. Look, you may get there. You may seem to be enjoying yourself. One day. Is your income coming from the proceeds of corruption, misappropriation of public funds? Is it coming from stealing or fraud or deception? Look. You may seem to be enjoying yourself today. One day. Everyone will face that question one day. What are you doing? What are you doing? Where did this come from? I want you to ask yourself this question. Are you real? Are you true? Or are you simply imitating or copying someone else? Because people of God, anything that is real, anything that is true, will stand the test of time. It's a common principle. Real products last. Fake products fade. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, real products last. Fake products fade. Ask your neighbor, are you real? An original document lasts, a photocopy fades. What are you doing today? that is not real and yet seems to prosper. One day, it will leave you at the time you need it most. This is why Prophet TV Joshua says, to become God's person, you must follow his process. The problem is our generation today, we are too impatient to go through the process, which is why we seem to prefer fake over real. And look, I can give you examples of this. They are bound in our society. Okay, just look at marriages. Look at marriages. If you're, if you're married here today, just raise up your hand. Thank you. I know there are more married couples than that. Now, Please don't be offended by what I'm going to say, but I'm going to speak a reality. Marriages today, if they are marriages, if there is marriage, many of them nowadays are fake. The reason of many marriages today is outward things. Money, appearance, fame. In marriage of today's generation, it's a matter of body agreements, not heart agreements. So if something happens that tampers with those reasons, something happens to the appearance, 
Something happens to the money. Something happens to the fame. The marriage has nothing to rest on and collapses. Or you marry because of urge. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, getting married cannot stop that urge. You marry because of depression. Getting married cannot solve the problem of depression. You marry because of age. God's time is the best. It's not the right person that brings the right time. It's the right time that brings the right person. What of our political life today? Politics, you know, democracy was created to be a government by the people, for the people, and of the people. But today, that no longer seems to be the case. Why is it today that our voices no longer seem to be heard? The opinions of people don't seem to matter anymore. Why? Because for many, the process of their ascendancy to power was tainted. Well, I have a very simple message, a very clear message. If you are a businessman here or, or a politician and you have built your career upon a stolen mandate, my brother, my sister, one day, a test of legitimacy is coming your way. People of God, reflect on this message. Ponder on this message and ask yourself, are you living by imitation or by inspiration? Are you moved by worldly comparison or godly conviction? Are you respecting the principle of processing? Or are you attempting to find a shortcut? Well, let today's message remind you of this truth. Whatever is built on a foundation that is fake, that is faulty, it will eventually collapse. It's a matter of time. The test of time is the clearest trumpets of truth. Your exits will be remembered longer than your entry. Your ending speaks much louder than your beginning. And now, matter how fast <laughs> fake appears to run at first, what is true will eventually overtake it. What is real, what is genuine, authentic, will eventually overtake it. Remember what the scripture says in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22, that God's blessings do not add any sorrow but whatever is given by the world has sorrow attached everyone will face that test of legitimacy one day don't wait for that question to be asked of you before you repent and run to God, before you repent and embrace the truth. Yes, we're living in a world dominated by falsehood, a world where there is so much fake, so many people living in fantasy. That's true, that's the reality. But in this world, the only thing that can sustain you is the truth and there is no other source of truth outside the living word of god 
I pray that the message you have received today has ignited your desire to serve Jesus in spirit and in truth. And I pray that this message has increased your alertness. Watch and pray. Thank you, people of God, for joining us for today's edition of Take Care of Your Hearts. Continue to seek God's heart to see your life clearly in Jesus' mighty name.